Yeah, time to drop Twitter. Yeah, maybe it's time to drop Twitter. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And uh, the tagline of our show is uh, Elon Musk is wrecking the Twitter platform. What do we do now? And uh, our guest today is none other than our uh, senior engineer, Eric Colander. You may have heard of him. He's already famous. And he's going he's gonna to talk about this from a, um, a think tech point of view and a, a technical point of view and a platform point of view. Because in fact, you know, we have, we are on eight social media platforms. We're all over town. And one of them has been Twitter. And in fact, uh, Eric has been managing our Twitter account. But not too long ago, we decided that it was, uh, was, was much too problematic for us to continue that. And so now we're off Twitter, like so many responsible corporations uh, around the country. Welcome to the show, Eric. Hey, Jay. Good to be here. Good to be on this side of the camera. <laughs> you do well at that. So let's let's talk about uh, our experience with Twitter. You were managing it for some time uh, under our impact program uh, funded by the Atherton uh, Family Foundation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wonder um, what it was like in the beginning and uh, how it changed and then how it changed with Elon Musk. Uh, so, well, Twitter, as you know, is uh, probably one of the most popular social medias out there where they got you know 250 million some odd users or so and um it's just the biggest way that people gather news these days and um so we started going on there started tweeting um not to a big impact uh but as soon as they made the announcement with elon we uh we nixed that mm, yeah Let's look at a commentary um, that we made, one of our other staff members made, um, about um, our decision process over that, a commentary about leaving Twitter. Okay, let's look at that now. Aloha. Thank you for your consideration of the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary. Up until now, Twitter has been going in the right direction compared to other social media platforms in regards to regulating hate speech, particularly when it barred Donald Trump. But Elon Musk's frenetic purchase of Twitter and what he has done since then has changed all that. Musk has permitted outrageous lies and conspiracy theories on Twitter, pulled moderation systems, and has himself tweeted hateful lies, appalling conspiracy theories and calls for violence, most recently spreading misinformation about the attack on Paul Pelosi. On the same day that Musk closed his deal, researchers from Montclair State University found that the platform has become a much more hostile environment. Hate speech increased 4.7 times higher than the seven-day average. Twitter is becoming an appalling and destructive force in social media and the public conversation, even more than before, dangerous to them, to us, and the country. We hope it fails, and we hope that its failure will show other social media platforms that they should not follow Musk's example. We hope other social media platforms will learn to respect the trust reposed in them by the public and that they will better moderate their content. We cannot succeed in anything as a nation of fools. Our democracy depends on demanding truth and rejecting lies from all media, and to act constructively and with purpose to achieve truth and reliable information about our community, our country, and the world around us. Lies and hate destroy democracy, and that should be clear from history. We can only hope there will be a more rational change in ownership and a sweeping and profound change in policy at Twitter. Or for a new, better platform in the future. Thanks so much for considering the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary. Aloha. Awful. Important. So um, can you tell us a little about um, Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter? Uh, you know, he's been in the paper every day on all of the, all of the other media and the print press, of course. They cover him, you know, in everything he does. Because um, they say he's the richest man on Earth, uh, what with his Tesla and his SpaceX. Um, and now this is his newest, quote, play toy, end quote. And that's an expression by by some other billionaire. 
discussing it. So um, what was it like for him to spend his 44 billion? Did I say 44 billion? Oh, yeah, I said 44 billion. What was that like? I mean, the, uh, the commentary said it was frenetic. Do you agree? Uh, absolutely, yeah. He uh, obviously, he just bought Twitter, was it two weeks ago now? And the reason he wanted to buy Twitter is because he thinks that there's some political uh, favoring for liberals on Twitter, as well as the other reason is the abundance of bots on Twitter. And he wanted to kind of bring that to an end. And um, I don't think he's going to really be able to do that very successfully. Um, it's I think he's jumping into something he doesn't really know that much about. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point that he hasn't been in this before, but he's a very smart guy and uh, he's done, you know, Tesla. That's not easy. Uh, he's managed it right down to rolling up his sleeves on the assembly line and uh, SpaceX, which I'm sure, you know, he didn't have any experience at all in that. So maybe maybe he'll learn about it. But the he's first thing a, he's a smart guy. So he, they, they, there's not, nothing saying he's stupid. He's a very, very smart individual. Yeah. So now the first thing he does is he, he fires all his uh, executive cadre. What was all that about? Uh, he just trying to get rid of the, out with the old and in, in with the new, I think is his uh, kitchen sink is the uh, term. I think he's just completely upending the corporate structure there uh, to kind of control things in the way he wants to do it without um any of that uh as he calls woke wokeness that surrounds twitter mm -hmm. um and he's kind of i don't i don't get the uh the uh uh why people are against being woke it's just you know being educated it's not it's been kind of turned into this uh political it's been politicized but it's really not anything more than being educated yeah so and and he did it you know i had a I had a client one time who uh, fired all the staff uh, in his company, its company, by email from its headquarters on the mainland. And boy, were they hoo-hoo. You wake up in, on a Monday morning and you're fired. Uh, it's, you know, it sounds like Trump, doesn't it? There's a certain, <laughs> a certain gratification in firing, like schadenfreude to take joy in 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 shattering people's uh, employment lives um what do you think about that what effect did it have on the those executives and I, there it's a broad range of executives uh and what what effect do you think it had on the rest of the people and there's quite a few people who have worked for twitter yeah they the, they said there was about 7500 uh employees not including the executives and he Axed, I think half of them right on October 27th or 28th, whatever the day was where he bought it, um, along with the top three executives. Uh, the three executives will be fine. I'm sure they'll they'll land on their feet. Uh, but the other people, they've uh, they I think there's they've brought a number of lawsuits against Twitter. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the, I guess I saw a report that he's even trying to hire some of the guys that he fired originally. So it kind of looks like he might not know what he's doing with that. I don't know. <laughs> well, two two thoughts on that. You know, number one, as I, what I last saw was it was actually a class action um, by uh, a number of, I mean, a, a great number of um, uh, Twitter executives uh, that he, he fired. Um, and, um, you know, the other is that uh, some of them who have been offered their jobs back again have said, hell no. Uh, right, we, right. We wouldn't work for you. Uh, but, but the other part of that is what, what kind of effect does that have on morale in the company in general? Not much. I'd be I'd be pretty afraid to uh, speak out too much um, against uh, what Elon's trying to do there um, for fear of losing your job, uh, which I don't think anybody should uh, have to uh, work in those conditions. Um, Talk yeah, about a hostile work environment, you know? Right, right, You're right. Fired on a Monday morning by email. Woo <laughs> <laughs> not 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 a good start to the week, that's for sure. Oh. And uh, you know, then I think he 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 was obligated, uh, arguably, to pay them some kind of severance, and he didn't do that. He just fired them. So so now there's an issue over that too. Well, um, 
Then, of course, uh, he gets in there and um, he wants to make the turn the company more Republican, I guess. This is a perfect time to do that. I mean, the whole thing seems planned to be big news just before the midterms. A lot mm -hmm. of people have said that. What do you think? And yeah, and he, he, he brands it as making it more uh, fair and equal. Um, one of his biggest arguments is that there is a very high liberal bias on Twitter, um, despite uh, studies and reports saying the exact opposite. Um, there was a study, I can't quite remember where who did it off the top of my head, but they, they concluded that the average Twitter user would be more inclined to see much more right-leaning tweets and profiles than left-leaning. So there really isn't that liberal bias that Elon is talking about. Hmm. Well, he, uh, he, he, he clothes that in the notion of free speech. Uh, and he calls it First Amendment. So like anybody can say anything. And this is a really interesting policy question. Um, and a lot of the people who he fired were actually moderators. You know, they were content moderators using moderation software in order to exclude hate speech and violent speech and all that. Um, so he's moved into a, 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 different, a, a different frame of reference now. It's the First Amendment um, on steroids. It's anything you want to say about anything at all, even if it's hate speech and even if it's completely obviously untrue. Where does that take Twitter? Is that the Twitter we, we used to know, or is that something else? Uh, well, Twitter has always had a, uh, they've always been, I think they delete millions of accounts, uh, fake accounts every month based off if they're bots and they're putting out malicious malicious uh, information or fake information. Uh, so yeah, so free speech uh, on Twitter has always been obviously a big thing, and but that doesn't mean you can go out and say whatever you want. Uh, Twitter has deleted accounts consistently based on whatever metrics they have. They, they don't want hate speech on there. And a lot of conservatives mostly are saying that that's unfair towards them um, with it, with hate speech or with, with when I, regarding lies about the election. That's that's the big one that people are getting uh, silenced for. Mm, very interesting. So the um, the staff that he fired uh, was largely involved in moderating hate speech. That is in keeping it off and terminating accounts that that, you know, were hate speech accounts. Um, and when he, my reading is when he fired them, um, the hate speech software they were running stopped working. In other words, the whole enterprise of, of uh, keeping hate speech off Twitter stopped. And so there are some stats now. Are you familiar with the stats only in the last few days about dramatic increases in hate speech? Yeah, and uh, so that the the video that we just played a little bit ago re uh, referenced a study from Montclair State University, and their study was um, within the first twelve hours of uh, of, Twitter, of uh, Elon's takeover, and they studied a a variety of uh, hate speech terms, which on a basic uh, weekly day aver weekly average was about eighty four times a day, the twelve o'clock midnight to twelve o'clock p.m. Um, first twelve hours of the first day. Those numbers rose up to about almost 300 an hour, and that was, that was that's 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is not these are not peak Twitter hours. This is the dead of the night mostly, and yet those numbers skyrocketed. Hmm. Well, you know it's it's global, so the dead of the night here may not be the dead of the night somewhere else. You know, <clears throat> so well, he, he himself, um, Elon Musk himself, is an active. Um, Twitter, uh, Twitterer, and in fact, he calls him chief. He calls himself chief, chief Twit. I think that's his title, his corporate title in Twitter now as the owner and the chief executive. And he he has made no bones about his own views, which are kind of uh, right wing. And he has um, he has also made tweets uh, that are conspiracy theories that are lies, and that are hate. Um, how does that play in all of this? 
You know, it seems to me that the uh, advertisers wouldn't like it too much if if the um, the chief twit, um, you know, did that. But he's doing it, or he had. I'm not sure if he's still doing it, but he got a lot of pushback. He he, he definitely has favored some of the the, the right leaning conspiracy theories, and the big one, obviously, with the election. Uh, I don't know if he's said come out and said that he believes Trump won, but he's definitely leaves it. I think more open to interpretation. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and then the pretty famous when he he did some kind of ridiculous conspiracy theory tweet over um, a Paul Pelosi, um, Nancy Pelosi's husband, who was attacked uh, just a week ago. Um, what happened there? Uh, well, the attack we all heard uh, some some crazy guy came in and attacked. Wanted to get Nancy, but only Paul was home, uh, and thankfully, you know, he's he's all right after the surgery. Uh, but yeah, I think Elon was trying to come up with. Uh, there's been a lot of conspiracies that this guy was Antifa and he's actually a liberal, and just, I don't I don't get how you could believe much of that. Um, he was he clearly wanted to go and hurt Nancy and her husband, and. I, yeah, I think that's the end of it right there. He was a crazy, crazy well, guy. What one of the uh, conspiracy theories was he had a prior relationship um, with the person who attacked him. I did not hear that. Yeah, I, I think that might have been involved in in Elon Musk's tweet, which is really a lie, not true, and it's mm -hmm. just provocative. But that whole thing about lying on Twitter is just so interesting because so many people, I mean many tens of millions, even hundreds of millions, um, believe it. Um, they believe it and, and they retweet it. Um, and then before you know it, you have you know, half the country. Half the country is involved in Twitter somehow, oh, yeah. directly or indirectly. And they, and they believe it and they think it's the news. I mean, some people have said that um, Twitter is, is the biggest news media in the country. Beyond all the others, that is really scary, considering its, its lack of responsibility, its lack of accountability, and the amount of um, conspiracy theories and hate speech that winds up on its, on its platform. Right. And for most people, when they see a tweet, that's, that's a lot. That's the beginning and the end of their, their news update, is reading this one tweet. Most people aren't going in to research things or finding different takes on it whatever tweet they read that's there that's fact now to them regardless of how true or untrue it might be yeah so if twitter doesn't moderate the content and if it allows all that on there um it has a huge reach and and i you know we never saw this before in our lives where a lie could reach so many people and affect public sensibilities public opinion and votes so i you know this is all directly related to the midterms. What's interesting, too, uh, you probably have seen this, is that Twitter moves very quickly. So if I put a tweet up, if I am, for example, Donald Trump, he's not a good example, but if I put a tweet up um, on Twitter, um, it can be somehow, you'll have to explain to me how this works, because I don't understand it. It's not like a newspaper where you may you may get a copy, an email copy of an article days later. No, no, no. This is minutes later, even seconds. How does that work? Uh, so yeah, retweeting is one of the uh, one of the features of Twitter that everyone's I'm sure is familiar with. Um, it just it, you yeah. When, if I was going to retweet you, Jay, it would people would see your tweet, but it would be on my timeline. And yeah, those things can spread like wildfire. Thanks to a lot because of bots. And bots work. They, it's just a program that can send out thousands of tweets, thousands of retweets every every day. Um, and that's then that's what is a big problem with Twitter because people listen to those bots, people who are following those bots, not knowing that they are bots. And they're putting out this sometimes hate speech, misinformation, lies, and people eat it up, they buy it, they they believe it as fact because that's their news source. You know, there are two things that have been very disturbing over the past day. In the media, uh, one is uh, the report that um, Vladimir Putin has activated his uh, social media uh, internet research agency in Moscow. 
um, to get on the bandwagon and uh, make tweets in, in favor of the Republican GOP MAGA group. Um, that's a great concern. The other piece I, I noticed uh, was that the Republicans are doing, I mean, it's really like real time. The Republicans are, are doing this now all of a sudden uh, in anticipation of election day. And so what you have is this huge swarm of tweets and retweets going on to try to change votes as of election day. <clears throat> you think you think that Twitter will change votes? I mean, the, the dark side of this, the Republicans, and for that matter, Vladimir Putin, who has always wanted uh, Trump and the MAGA Republicans to win elections, um, are actively trying to change votes right now, to either to change votes affirmatively or to confuse people about voting. You know, um, Do you think it'll work? Uh, to a degree, yeah, I, I, they, they they do have an effect. Um, what whatever Russia has been doing, um, and but also I I think that in today today's elections and stuff, uh, everyone's kind of already in their own silos. I don't know how many people are going back and forth so much, but more that people are getting cemented into their own beliefs more and more. You make it even harder and harder to see the other side's viewpoints. Um, again, coming back to the election, everyone knows that obviously that was a fair election that, that Donald Trump lost, but to so many people, they just fundamentally don't believe that. And if you don't fundamentally don't believe that there's, there's, I don't know what you can do, uh, that you can't convince them. Yeah. Well, I, you know, um, we're going to, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see how that works. But you know, the one thing that disturbed me when all this started, and that it was uh, either just before or just after Musk uh, closed on his acquisition of, of uh, Twitter, was uh, the suggestion um, that he would, um, he would allow Donald Trump back on. After January 6th, Twitter threw Trump off. Uh, they, they blamed, as most right-thinking people did, the insurrection on Trump. Uh, because Trump called for it in public, on television. Um, so they threw him off. And he's been off ever since uh, early 20, uh, 2021 um, till now. But uh, Elon Musk said he was going to let him back on again. You think he will let him back on again? That seems consistent with your perception of this. And if he gets back on, what effect? I think it's... It's going to depend on if and when he announces his campaign, which it's looking like he is going to. And I think the argument will be, uh, well, if all these other candidates can have Twitter, why can't this candidate? And it, it, this he's a very special case because not no other candidate has tried to incite an insurrection. So it's a little bit different for him. Um, but I do believe that he will be eventually allowed back on and he's going to go right back to his old games. He's going to spew those lies again he's going to spew more lies he's he's going to he's going to do everything he can to fake the election again and thus our democracy and thus our country so this is really important uh what happens with elon musk uh, he controls the largest platform uh platform people regard as news he controls uh and he believes that he needs to quote open it up, end quote, but really favoring the conservatives and the extreme conservatives. Um, and if he lets Trump back on, that's going to have a significant effect. This is a pretty, oh, and, and this is the, the, the um, preferred platform for people who want to uh, spread the big lie and spread conspiracy theories and so forth. Um, and you know what? This may have an effect on Facebook. I saw... Um, an article also, Eric, that Facebook was going, was in the process of terminating a very substantial percentage of its staff also. Trump claims, uh, rather, uh, Musk claims that he terminated staff because he was losing money. Um, Facebook might make the same argument. We, we don't know if that would be true or not. Um, and then terminate a lot of staff there too. And what that what that's code, it sounds like to me, for terminating um, 
the moderators, terminating the content moderators and, and shrinking down the moderation systems and doing what Trump would, uh, and doing what uh, Musk is doing with Twitter. So this may be a, a virus here among um, other social media platforms. Um, that's, that's also pretty scary, isn't it? It is, yeah, because you, you don't want to see this stuff uh, travel to the other social medias because then that's that much more, uh, more reach on, uh, on social media. Uh, so hopefully it, they don't go uh, the way of Twitter. Yeah, well, you know, we have been trying to put uh, think tech content out on um, on various social media platforms altogether, eight of them, uh, plus um, a level community television. And um, what what kind of effect does this have? A significant effect on our efforts to develop impact, either in Hawaii or on a, on a national basis, um, that we are jumping ship on Twitter. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of corporations, very responsible national and multinational corporations that have, in fact, jumped ship on Twitter, saying they, they can't tolerate what, what Musk is doing, and they could not tolerate having lies and conspiracy theories and crazy perversions of the truth um, back on again, and they're jumping ship. Um, how is this going to affect Twitter? Do you think um, Twitter will lose more money? Um, do you think that um, Elon Musk will be able to make that up with his $8 blue check system? Um, do you think that Twitter will survive? Uh, I think Twitter will survive uh, because it's it, at any point could be bankrolled by its the richest man in the world. Uh, but they are going to lose money. Uh, Twitter has never really been a profitable com company. They, they're consistently in the red. Um, and so they, the only uh, revenue they have really is advertisers. And yeah, like you mentioned, a dozen and a half uh, av major advertisers, major companies have pulled all their advertisements for, from Twitter, which is uh, yeah, Elon's all talking about. He's complaining about it. Um, but uh, in in fairness to Elon, he has not made any content changes yet, but these are um, the pulling of the advertisements is kind of a making a statement to Elon like, don't you better not make these changes, otherwise we'll never come back. That's an interesting question, and I wanted to ask you about that. So they they leave uh, in protest uh, of, of many things which we have talked about here. Um, but they always say we might come back if he he cleans his act up. Um, right. So so and, and for that reason, um, he may clean his act up or not. If he's really a good businessman, he will clean his act up. And that's right what now. he is. He's he's a businessman. He's he's if if something's not making money, I don't think he's going to stick around for too long, or he's going to change his practices pretty quickly. Um, and right. Twitter could be a very profitable or I. I I don't know have the answers to why it has never been profitable. Um, other social media sites are. Uh, Twitter just has not been able to, despite being one of the most popular and uh, big news source for so many people. I wonder how much his um, popularity, I should, that's the wrong word, his, um, his, his, his appearance in the news these days, every, every minute of every day. You can look at the Washington Post and the New York Times and on an average day, see two or three articles or op-ed pieces about it. So he's getting his name, you know, he's getting his name out there. He's becoming a, a very famous person. And that has got to have an effect on people not so much leaving Twitter, but joining Twitter. They want to see what all the hubbub is about. They want to follow the action. Um, what do you think? Will, will that help him being a, a mm, negative celebrity this way? It'll gain him popularity with uh, with those those people, um, for sure. But it's not going to make him popular with the, his ad, the advertisers, and that's again what he needs to run the company. Um, but it will definitely uh, he'll get some he'll get more supporters and more support from his current supporters. So some of them have said they've reserved the possibility um, that they'll come back if if he if he. Cleans his act up on these things. 
that they'll come back. Um, do you think this will happen? And is it, should this affect the way we at ThinkTech feel about it? Uh, might we come back? Uh, I, I think we we could definitely go back because, uh, again, Twitter is such a, a valuable uh, source for um, a company like Things at Kauai uh, to to reach its viewers, to to display its content. So it's, it's definitely valuable. But if they're going to be out there with unmoderated hate speech and why uh, it's not a place that you might want to be. Okay, here's a hard question for you, Eric. Are you ready? Are you sitting down for a hard question? We'll find out. <laughs> what does this tell us about the future of social media in general? It seems to me that Elon Musk and Twitter have created an inflection point. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, Facebook is also uh, firing people in large numbers. Um, uh, and I don't know what effect that has on the moderation of content there. It's always been an issue on Facebook and others. Um, are, are we going to have um, more or less hate content in general uh, on these social media sites? Are we going to see uh, governmental regulation of um, the moderation of hate, hate speech and uh, content on these sites? How, how is social media going to change in the context of this inflection point? Oh, I don't see uh, social media, especially Twitter, going very much farther forward without some sort of government regulation. Uh, it's it's too tied into politics and news that you can't just let it free roam as it has been. Because what happens is, yeah, you know, lies spread like wildfire. And despite them being objectively false and no basis, so many people believe them. And you, you it might take government regulation to. Uh, to fix that, which I, and I think that's a way that most social media companies will have to go. Mm, what you're really what that saying, regulation is, I don't know. What you're really saying is that we may have to take a look, another look at the First Amendment because they live in the protection of the First Amendment, and uh, query whether this means that the First Amendment also has to has to change. Well, the First Amendment is, of course, very important. It's an inherent right that Americans have. But it, it, it's the, the famous exception, you can't yell fire in a movie theater. I don't, there, there's got to be more exceptions, but one of those, except, a new exception needs to be you can't incite a, an insurrection. That, you, that if, if you're going out there and speaking to the masses like these, these kind of, you can't allow that because look what happened. Yeah, and the other, the other part of it is um, you, you can't have, uh, a country that runs on lies. You can't have a democracy that runs on lies, especially when, you know, 300 uh, candidates who are seeking election in the midterm uh, deny um, the 2020 presidential election, 300 of them. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of lies like that, you can't have a, a democracy. And if you don't have a democracy, boy, it's going to be different. And so really the question is, whether it's too late already, it may be too late um, to actually, you know, moderate the content on social media and to get back to um, respect for the truth uh, in a functioning democracy. Any thoughts? Uh, I don't think it's too late for Twitter or social media to go that way. Um, but I think it is definitely too late for a lot of these uh, election deniers. Uh, people like there, there's for some of them, there's no convincing with any amount of facts that that what, what's fact is fiction. Yeah, one thing is clear though that, that the whole issue with Elon Musk and Twitter and possibly other social media sites is inextricably intertwined uh, with public sensibility, with 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 voting, and with the the future of our democracy and thus our country uh, that, you know, we thought for a time that social media was, was kids play uh, or even a play toy of a guy like Elon Musk. Now we see that it is inextricably intertwined with our future. All of us. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Eric Kalander is, is chief engineer of think tech Hawaii sharing his thoughts on the, uh, on Elon Musk's, uh, 
acquisition and management of, of Twitter. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, Jack. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.